Welcome to Dark Tower Month 4, a comic a day. And I'm doing things a little differently this month. We're about halfway through this run of videos by now. We're actually over half. We're definitely over half. We're definitely over halfway through this run of videos by now. So you should know that this month I'm featuring my partner in crime, Criff. And if you don't know, you should probably go back to video one and figure that out because this won't make a lick of sense. From the Bard and Criff vlog channel, which has some very fun stuff that me and him do together. It's YouTube, don't look at me like that. <laughs> Format is just going to be a little looser with analysis throughout the recappy bits, so massive spoilers are massive for everything Dark Tower this month. You've been warned. So Roland is not going to hide the fact that he pulled the trigger to kill his mom. With Steven trying to figure out what is to be done, he knows that the orb is evil and influenced him, so he's like, Look, son, I don't want to lose any more people. However, Roland's- I'm tired of my family dying, but you also shot your mother. I need to punish you somehow. And, and even <laughs> Roland's like, throw me in jail. If you need to hang me, I understand. <laughs> no, no, son, I don't want to hang you. You're not dying this day. We'll wait until tomorrow. <laughs> Cuthbert, Elaine, and Eileen are looking on among the few in the room, because- they went, aha, he must have gone to his mother's room, last issue, and when they show up, <laughs> oh god, he went to his mother's room. <laughs> Stephen has Robert and Christopher, those are Elena Cuthbert's dad's name, so he tells them to go, you know, lift her body, get it out of here, but then the poison dagger falls from her sleeve with farce and sigil on it. Stephen now believes that Roland should be innocent due to pretty much everything, you know, compiled, and Roland's just like, no, take me into custody. <laughs> Steven's like, fine. Beat me. Beat me, daddy. <laughs> what? No, no, that's okay. My name is daddy. Yeah, hit me harder. No, that one's new. <laughs> However, while all of that is going on, another guard comes into the room huffing. A raven has carried off the grapefruit and three men, one fitting Martin's description, another masked man that we know who they are. Yep. And a third person that is, in fact, the reanimated traitorous musician have ridden out of town. And Steven's like, okay, let's go after him. Because let's be honest. Right now, he needs to shoot something. He does, but let's not question the fact that this man that Court stabbed is now, you know, alive again. Not only alive, but riding a horse <laughs> of his own volition. No weekend at Bernie's shenanigans. Elsewhere, in Court's cottage, he's vomiting up blood and is really on death's door. But sadly, the book that he thought contained all these plans and everything that they wanted was in fact bewitched to keep him reading so the poison would take effect. But still... Just touching the pages poisoned him. Well, it's not just to a touching, point that it would have made him, him sick. Licking his finger and using that. I don't buy it. It's okay. I understand. This ain't no Never Never Land. I don't buy it. Vinay says that the boys should come in to see their teacher before you know. That. <laughs> Glad we both went there. <laughs> Over by the gates of the city. Shimi's back! Yay! <laughs> Shimi's back! Because, you know, he took two to the chest, but he got better. Well, yeah, he also went into the orb and Hadouken, <laughs> fucking Crimson King. <laughs> so Shimi is here to see Roland Cuthbert and Lane, but the guards at the gate are like, get out of here, you slow little... C you can't no. come in. You don't belong in with us. Us normies. <laughs> Shimi understands. So Shimi teleports away. <laughs> I, just, I just love how it's like, you know, get the hell out of here, boy. Shimi understands. Poof. <laughs> Over in the prison, Bert and Elaine come to visit Roland to tell him, you know, you won't be found guilty, as there's been a ton more evidence against Martin. But Roland, being the emo SOB he is, is like, when they come to kill me, I want it to be you two to take me to the next world. I want you to kill me. And then literally, Bert and Elaine are like, nah, <laughs> if they find you guilty, we're gonna break you out. <laughs> But it's weird, because, like, at this point, in this, at this point of it, you just kind of look at Roland and you go, how could he be more broken? <laughs> none. None more broken. And then you read the books. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go, dude, I would have shot myself, like, before the first book started. <laughs> so over with their fathers, they're on the trail of Martin, and whoever else. They come to the ruined city of New Canaan, from before the fall of the Imperium, which is a whole other bag of worms, unless you'd like to talk. I have not enough time. <laughs> but decide, okay, they're not there, let's go continue looking on. You'd suddenly slow mutants ambush them, using poison darts to kill the horses and try and kill them. Which is weird, because this is the only time we see slow mutants with poison anything. But the gunslingers don't run, and the slow mutants really have no concept of, let's duck, because most of the time people run screaming away. 
The gunslingers blow them away with their guns, all except one who was hiding. In a panic, the slow mutant pops up and uses its blow dart gun to try and kill Steven. But Roderick, father of Cuthbert, shoves his king out of the way, and he gets a poison dart to the chest. His last words are an annoyed, Oh, damnation. <laughs> Which I really would have liked it better if it was something like, Oh, tarnation. <laughs> <laughs> Robert is as much his son as everyone else, as everyone else is like a mirror of their father. So Robert is their version, the father's pet version of Cuthbert. Dying with a joke on his lips would have been better. Well, okay, I could see that. Otherwise, that's the end of this issue. And something interesting about these issues is that Richard Eisenova is running solo on the art for this series, which, while it doesn't look really different than when he was co-arting with Jay Lee, it almost actually feels like there's less awkward art moments in there this is, run. There like, is. Even Shitley's Mule looked better in this. Everyone looked better. Like, it doesn't look that different, but at the same time, you can see a more cohesiveness to it. Right. There's, there's a set plan of thought to it. Not like sharing it between two people where someone has this one vision, someone can have a similar vision, but it's not exactly the same. Right, 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 right. So everything is sculpted around that initial vision and then something else looks completely different. Well, not completely, but slightly different. Yeah. It sticks out like a freaking It's like, thumb. like you could see, like especially when it came to like, because you brought this up, I think in Long Road Home, sometimes Cuthbert has like really great art and then other times... Yeah, when Cuthbert looks good, he looks good. But when he looks bad, he looks real bad. Whereas right here in this, we can definitely just see good. There's not really... Yeah. Although, to be fair, I never pictured the slow mutants looking like that. I didn't either, but that's because of the artwork in The Gunslinger. Exactly. And it's... in um The Wastelands, where we meet Gasher, and they have that full-page art of him. So, seeing the art that Stephen King originally planned for them, and yeah. seeing how... It's just artist inter right. interpretation. So, that's it for today. Come back tomorrow where, well, we get pretty much Court's major death scene. Yeah, that takes up an almost an entire issue. Hasta la vista, Inklings. Goodbye.